I'm Nick Helm, and welcome to the Film Quiz Podcast. <laughs> it's a quiz about films in the form of a podcast. It does exactly what it says in the title, just like Kill Bill, Free Willy, and Throw Mama from the Train. Uh, although that mainly happens in the dream sequence. I didn't write this. I should stress that right now. If there's anything that you don't like about what I'm saying, it's not me. Um, if someone else wrote it. We've had quite a lot of uh, fan mail that's come in so far. Uh, but I'm not going to stop. We're going to keep going. I, I don't care what you write. Um, <laughs> uh, in each episode, our contestants fight it out to prove that they know their Sean Beans from their Sean of the Deads, their Jackie Chans from their Jackie Browns, and their fight clubs from an Oscar ceremony. <laughs> no, no, do you know what? No, no, no groaning. No groaning. We'll, we'll fade you down and we'll just add in a round of applause. So... Just get on board right now, okay? Our indecent proposal is to ask the contestants to use their basic instincts to answer a series of... No, go on, fuck yourselves. <laughs> right, I've said I'm not in control of any of this. I'm just a man for hire, right? There, there's going to be film references. Get over it, right? This is the nature of the beast. Um, our indecent proposal is to ask the contestants to use their basic instincts to answer a series of questions about film, and at that end... One of them will be crowned the best of the best, which is another film, if you remember. Best of the best. Um, I think Eric Roberts was in it. Brilliant, great. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's meet tonight's Inglorious Bastards. You see, there's, there we go. It's going like, to be that all night. Just fucking lighten up about it. You've got your arms folded. Unfold them now, right? So, you know, get your hands ready to start clapping because we're going to have a fucking amazing time. Uh, let's meet tonight's Inglorious Bastards. Our first contestant is a stand-up comedian and writer. She was the winner of Best Show at the 2021 Leicester Comedy Festival. She has gone on to appear on Live at the Apollo, Hypothetical and Stand Up Sketch Show. It's Esther Manito from Saffron Walden. <laughs> Next, we have an actor, singer, and stand-up comedian who won Best Newcomer at the Musical Comedy Awards and the Variety Prize at the Funny Women Awards. Her show, Supersonic 90s Kid, played to full houses in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in whenever it was, 2019, I was there, and was recommended by both the British Comedy Guide and the Comedy Central as one of the top 12 shows of the Fringe. It's Suze Kempner from Gatwick. <laughs> And finally, an award-winning comedian, theatre maker, director, comedy writer, in 2017, she was nominated for Best Show at the Edinburgh Comedy Awards and has gone on to appear on the stand-up sketch show and comedians giving lectures. It's Alf Lyons! <laughs> Alf Lyons from Kilburn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Hi, how you doing? You all all right? Yeah. Yeah, good. Esther, what's your favourite film? Uh, <laughs> mine's Goodfellas, but I feel that's a bit of a cliche, but that no, is... No, 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 no. Who's seen Goodfellas? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who hasn't seen Goodfellas? <laughs> you have not fucking seen Goodfellas. <laughs> oh, you're fucked, Alf. You're absolutely <laughs> fucked. This is not the show for you. Uh, yeah, Goodfellas is great. Yeah. Okay, fine. I yeah. never know what's cool, so I, don't, I never know what to say. I don't know what the words are. What's your favourite thing about Goodfellas? I just... I like all gangster films. Oh, well, that kind of... Like, takes... <laughs> You might as well say full English is your favourite. <laughs> or well, fucking Once Upon a Time in London. You know, they're all, they're all oh. shit. Um, <laughs> what is... Um, it was, Ray Liotta died recently, wasn't he? I thought he he was, did die. I, and I think, like, non-controversially, he's the best thing about it. No, he's amazing. I it? think Goodfellas was like peak Liotta, and then everything yeah. after that was uh, like, yeah. oh, God. Because keeps... then he was in that film with Sigourney Weaver. What, Operation Tumbo Drop? No. <laughs> Heartbreakers? Uh, yes. Yes, he was in yeah. Heartbreakers. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like that. We're not, we're, well, <laughs> that's great, Suze, but we're not on you yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bit rude. Um, sorry, Esther. Uh, that will happen. Um, one of my favourite things was right, right, I saw an interview with him uh, that he'd filmed like, before he died, and they were saying, what did you use for Coke on Goodfellas? And he said, they just used Coke. So... <laughs> 
I just like that scene where they were making uh, meatballs in the in the in the in prison. prison, and they were like slicing the garlic, and I just it always makes me hungry. I yeah. like those films because I always then make a nice meal after. <laughs> after all the murder and stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, nice the, bolognese. That's a really that's a really good tomato sauce recipe yeah. good, in, God, yeah. in the Godfather. That's why I watch yeah. it just for tips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Like in the in the mid '90s, they did uh, what was it? Late lunch with Mel and Sue. Yeah. Oh and yes. Johnny Vaughan was the guest, and he. Uh, as you, you had to bring in a recipe for your lunch. And he sliced he garlic in, with a razor. Yeah, he did the Goodfellas lunch. No, he didn't. He did. Wow. Why would I make that up? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Everything no. about you just seems really calm and rational. I don't know. <laughs> well, it, it's much more realistic that I've got an encyclopedic knowledge of all the guests on Sunday, on late lunch with Mel and Sue uh, from the mid 90s. Uh, Sue, uh, how are you doing? Hey, I'm all right, thanks. Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's special about your cat? <laughs> oh, what a natural way of getting into that. Um, my cat, who's dead, was Jonesy in Aliens. Her cat was Jonesy in Aliens? Yeah. <laughs> What's that fucking reaction? That's like, that's, like, that's like saying my cousin is fucking, I don't know. Brad Pitt. <laughs> well, I was going to say an alien. Or something. <laughs> that's like, I, well, I, I don't know. But yeah, I know. Yeah. He, he wasn't Jonesy in Alien, was he? Aliens. Just Aliens. Wait, Just they aliens. were in Aliens? Yeah. Yeah, there's a ginger cat in Alien. How do you cast? Like, did you have to audition? Very Wait. talented. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a very pushy owner? <laughs> it was when I was just a baby. Well, no, my parents were friends with a woman who got animals for film and TV. And she said, we need a ginger cat that will hiss on command. And my mum was like, ours is horrible. It was so, <laughs> so they just get another cat out of the box and he goes, that's my cat. Was that it? I thought that... He does all kinds of things, but that was how they made him his. All the other stuff is just, like, eating and that. I thought your cat was from, like, a, like a show family. Like, <laughs> like, his mum and dad had been in, you know... No, no, it was just, just that, because uh, he was horrible. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. OK, well, Suze Kempner. Um, <laughs> what's your, what's your favourite film, Suze? Goodfellas. Oh. No way! Yeah. We've, we've, we've done that. Oh, and... Really? Um, uh, and, and Elf, of course, there's no need to ask you what your favourite film is. Uh, so obviously it's Anchorman, Anchorman 2, <laughs> The Legend Continues. Uh, what's your, what's your favourite film? Um, I think it's probably Rosemary's Baby. Oh. Yeah, or Misery. <laughs> that is our family Christmas film. Sure. <laughs> but, um, no, why not? It's snowy, happy it's, ending. It's yeah. yeah, cathartic. Yeah. I once, um, me and my husband once watched Misery on Valentine's Day. <laughs> it is, it's about boundaries. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it's a good way of setting up what happens when you really push a woman to a limit. <laughs> sure. No. Um, I like I'm how... so delighted to have all three of you wonderful women on the show today. Uh, thanks very much. Um, well, it's great to meet all of our contestants. Uh, put your hands together again for our resident score counter, it's Huge Davies! Hello again. <laughs> I've, done, um, I've done my homework this week. Okay. What, what, was, it, what was your homework? Um, you know what, I, I lied there. Okay. I've not, I've not, I, I, as much work as last week, I will say that. I've done even less work than last week, and, um, and it is showing, to be fair. Um, what, what film stuff have you done this week? I watched The Snowman this week. But I, was, I watched that film just because why not? It's like 25 minutes long. And then I was watching it, and I was like, I love the message of this Christmas film. Because a lot of other Christmas films, at the end, they're like, it's all about family or killing robbers in your house. <laughs> but this film... At the end, it's. Uh, I think the, I, I try to figure it out. The message is, your best friends will die. <laughs> and we don't get that at Christmas. I don't hear it enough. You don't hear it enough. <laughs> unless, yeah. unless you're a uh, turkey. <laughs> Maybe all turkeys. Maybe that's for the turkey. That's for the boys. Very few turkeys make it to Christmas. So it's not like you're going to like watch a film with a turkey on Christmas. You know, it will be I dead mean, already. I do it with my turkey. It's like Clockwork Orange. <laughs> I'll sit him in the chair. Brilliant. 
Let's go to round one. Yeah. Round one is called True or False, right? It's easy, true or false, yeah? I will read out a series of film-related facts and all you have to do is tell me if they are true or if they are false. There's two points for every correct answer, plus a chance to score a bonus point with an extra question. That's important that you were listening to that, Huge. Sorry. <laughs> All right, Esther, we're still going to start with you. All right, All right. we're going to start with you. Right, question one, right? Mm -hmm. Question one. Is this mm. to me? Sorry, was this no, to No, this me? is to... <laughs> Huge, all you need to do is just keep an eye on the scores, right? All right? So, Huge, there's two points for every correct answer, plus a chance to score a bonus point with an extra question at the end of that first question. Right, brilliant. Esther, yeah. question one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The 2014 film, Maleficent, is a live action remake of the Disney animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. True or false? True. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Right, that was false. It was obviously. Oh, it was, it was Sleeping a, Beauty. It was Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did the best Disney. What's the witch cartoon. in Snow White called? Uh, the witch? Sarah. <laughs> Imagine if she was just called like Sue. <laughs> so. Did she have a name? Don't know. Because she was the mummy. She's the she's wicked mummy. Mum, she she, the was, wicked she had the crown and like she wore like the cat suit with the wings and yeah. then she turned into the crow. Yeah, she looks quite yeah. similar to Melissa. That my ex-boyfriend said looked like me when she was the crow. <laughs> <laughs> she's really that? fit when that? she's the crone. <laughs> My ex-boyfriend sent it to me and said, hey, look, Suze, it's you. I'm going to fucking what hunt him Suze? down. I'm going to fucking kill him, Suze. <laughs> OK, here's your bonus question. Maleficent is the villain in 1959 Sleeping Beauty, played in two live-action films by Angelina Jolie. For a bonus point, name Snow White Seven Dwarfs. Sleepy. Yeah. Sneezy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grumpy. Yeah. Doc. Yeah. Three more. Uh, don't, don't embarrass me. Oh, I can't. That was a clue, right? You all got Oh, that. bashful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy. And, uh, <laughs> and what's the one? What's the one that always wants kisses? Oh, that's that? bashful. Pervy. 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 <laughs> Sex Pesty, Elliot. The H Dwarf um, cancelled. Forgetful! Seven, no, no, oh. you got six out of seven. I should get half. You get, it was Dopey. Dopey was the dopey oh. was the one that you didn't get. It was Doc, Bashful, oh. Happy, Grumpy, Sleepy, Sneezy, and Dopey. We'll give you half of that I one. No, we, don't, we won't. We won't get, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. We've half. asked one fucking question so far, no, and it's half. gone on for 55 minutes. Can we just... <laughs> can we... Right, okay, wait, I'm just gonna have to rely. You did ask me to remember about 75 small people. It was seven. It was famously at seven dwarfs, all right? And I think they're fantastical. They're not like what is... in the realm of the real world. So we can all get around that. Yeah. What or we'll was just that? cancel. We'll just uh, not cancel. We're not canceling anyone. Anything. Um, right, okay, so Suze, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger has played Hamlet in a film, true or false? False. What do you mean false? When did he play Hamlet? In fucking Last Action Hero, didn't it? Oh shit, fucking yeah. All right. It says dis <laughs> sorry, it says discuss with Suze and get the answer, but I'm so furious that you've <laughs> foregone that. I'll bit. give you my bonus one then. What what um okay, okay. Uh, do you want a bonus? Do you want a do you want, do you want a in, in what in which film did he sort of play King Lear? Is it still Last Action Hero? No. <laughs> Sorry. No, it, was, it was The Lost World. He's got a marquee stand and blockbuster video when the T-Rex goes into it and he was in the movie. Okay. Do you want um, There's a bit of trivia on this. Do you want the trivia? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, all right. Go on. Sorry. So it's a tr Sorry, I was asked to read this out. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His biggest upfront payday was for Batman and Robin. But I'm finished. I'm finished yet. I'm, it was. Uh, if, if you just if you just waited, I'd probably read that out, wouldn't I? Uh, yeah, he got I want to guess. 50, got, 50 million. No, half it. 25, 25 million. 25 million. Great. And for a bonus question, Suze, for an extra point, other than Last Action Hero, name any three Arnold Schwarzenegger films from his golden era between 1990 and 19. I feel like that's, that's, a, that's an easier easy. question. But I, I know, I had to too list so many people. It's yeah, really like, seven, again, seven. It's like you have to name seven, and also, seven dwarves I, that we've all grown Dopey up with. Dopey and Bashful are essentially the same. I know the answer to this, please. Okay, okay, Any okay, hang on a minute, Sue. From the golden age. From the golden Terminator age of 19. I would say Arnold Schwarzenegger's golden age 
it was is 1984 over. to 1987. Yeah, but, agree. That like, means I can't say like Commando and stuff like you that. You can't say Commando. That was yeah. 1986. Yeah, obviously. exactly. Um, Kindergarten Cop was very good. So that was 1990. Yeah. I Junior. Loved that. My answers are Junior was one. Jingle all the way. Golden era. Oh, that's the film. Oh, fuck me. They're like two of his very worst. <laughs> no, but they did ever so well. Sure, they did ever so well. <laughs> they did ever so Terminator well. Terminator 2. Terminator 2. That's the three. You've named three. Yeah. Junior. Junior. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. Oh, twins. Yeah. Twins, oh, that's, that's good. No, that Running was, Man. That was 1988. 1986, Running Man. Terrible adaptation yeah, of that book, though. Yeah, okay, cool. Very well, you could have had... You could have had Total Recall, Kindergarten Cop, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Dave, True Lies. Dave, Dave he's got a fucking cameo in that. And I bet <laughs> True Lies, Junior, Eraser, Jingle All the Way, Batman and Robin, or End of Days. No. End of Days. No. 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 Yeah, yeah, actually, I thought it was 97, but it's 99. End of Days came out. Never mind. 99. You don't, you don't care, weirdly. All right, uh, you get one point. That's for Hugh's benefit rather than yours. Excuse me. <laughs> and Elf. Hello. Question three, unbelievably. Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe wears his real childhood glasses in all eight Harry Potter films. Is that true or false? Elf? It is true. Well, why do you think it's that? Why do you think, why do you well, think that's the answer? It just makes it practical because if you need glasses, um, why would you wear pretend glasses on set? You Absolutely. Just, yeah, and he's too young to wear contact lenses. If he you'd probably have quite dry eyes because it's quite stressful on set. So I and his mother was a casting director, I think. So you practically, if you really wanted to shoe him in for the role, you'd get him prepared for the character already. And one of the selling points would be, uh, and he's got his own glasses. And they'd go, yeah, all right. Yeah, let's yeah. get him then. We'll, we'll just save. You know, because if you think about it, if you think about it, yep. on a one film basis, you're not saving that much money, right? <laughs> but over eight films? Fucking how many pairs of sun? <laughs> exactly. Good thinking. Yeah, really good thinking. Yeah, no, it's false, isn't it? It's false. What? <laughs> but I... <laughs> Huge put a point down for enthusiasm, please. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? We might do that because no one's going to get any points otherwise. It's important to show you're working out. Even if the so answer's not correct, it's, really it's about the thought process to get there. Really good. And I think we That's can all unfair. agree I, I worked I, I hard. I don't think there's a soul in here that isn't proud of you, Elf. Um, <laughs> uh, they're just keeping it to Mom? themselves right now. But, Radcliffe didn't wear glasses in real life and managed to break 160 pairs. Well, if anything, casted him. <laughs> Set them back millions. 160 <laughs> pairs. Although, if they went to spec savers, it would be the equivalent of 80 pairs. Great. OK, so your bonus question is you've yeah. got nothing so far, so you can only win, right? A running gag in Harry Potter involves a high turnover of defence against the dark arts teachers at Hogwarts. Yes. For a point, name any three of the six actors who teach D-A-D-A, -A, da, da in the film adaptations or adaptions. Um, oh, he, he plays the German man in that film. You could the literally tower. name any three British actors. No, I know him. One. What's he called? Alan Rickman. Yeah, he, yeah, he plays defensive. Yeah. But he did play a Quite German man in a tower. Quite patronising of you guys, but um, it's appreciated. How many more did I have to make? You need to get two no. more. OK, so Adam Rickman, so who else played? Adam Rickman. Yourself? Um, Adam Rickman, he was very good. Yeah. Um, oh, that man, he's very talented. Um, British actor. Yeah. Um, he, got, he played the garden man who buries someone up. Um, and it feels Bury someone up. In Harry Potter? Yes, and he's also, he's a werewolf in the film, and he's such a beautiful, oh, he's got kind eyes. He's in it, and then the gentleman at the this beginning... Is, where is are you German? my mum? What, uh, <laughs> come on. No, but I, can I draw them? Because <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah. exactly. I, know well he, the I think his yeah. name's got... We've got I a drawing round. He's got R in. Oh, no, we R cut the drawing Rupert. round. We don't have a Rupert, drawing round. I think there's a Rupert there. No, time's up. No, no, no. You could have had Ian Hart, Kenneth yes. Branagh, David Kenneth Thewlis. Branner. No, it's too late. Too little, too late. But they all... Brendan Gleeson, Imelda Staunton, and you, the only one you did get was What's Alan Rickman. Imelda? Oh. Yeah, Imelda, yeah. Who's Professor Snape switches subjects in the sixth film. Mm. Yeah, but it's a bit of an in-joke, I suppose. I could have but, done a good know, drawing of that if, if, you're still, if you're still there. It's weird, isn't it, with the Harry Potter films? They started with the worst one, and then they got progressively better. Yeah. Um, I didn't see any of the others. Uh, <laughs> Can, what's your what's your fun fact, Huge? Um, this is about Daniel Radcliffe. Oh no, no more on that. <laughs> Question four. No, no, no. Question no. four. Back to Esther. Yeah. Mr. Cat Poop was an international title for 1997's feel good Oscar favourite. As good as it gets. True or false? True. So rather than 
false. Why do you think it's true? Why do you think it's true? Do you think it I don't know what any of that meant, so I'm well, just saying true. So As Good As It Gets was a film starring Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt. Yes, I remember that. Uh, he got an Oscar but for it. But I don't it. know anything about Mr. Ken Poop. But the international title for it, we're saying, you know, wasn't uh, As Good As It Gets. Everywhere else, they called it as good as it gets in, in England and America. But everywhere else, they called it Mr. Cat Poop. Is that true or false, do you think? It's true. And why do you think that? Just because it's 50-50, isn't it, at yeah. this stage? And yeah. I'm going to stand by it. No, you're right, it is true. Uh, no. no, you did very well. You did very well. The name of the lead character, Melvin... He's reluctant to give me a point. Uh, no, she got that. Fair no, 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 I did... I did I... I did put I did put that and she got a point, but then she tapped me on the arm again. I didn't want to bother explaining over the microphone. Yeah, hit, stop, <laughs> hit, stop hitting me again. Okay, well the correct answer is true. The name of the lead character Melvin is close to a Cantonese slang word for cat shit. Hence the Lost in Translation title. Well, yeah. for, for a bonus point, Esther, name the three actors who were nominated for acting Oscars for their performance in As Good as It Gets. Well, I've literally named them all. Uh, give her Jack a point. Nicholson, it doesn't matter. No. Helen Hunt. And somebody else. Uh, Greg Kinnear. Yeah. The first two people won. Uh, Jack Nicholson and Helen Hunt won. And then uh, Greg Kinnear lost out to Robin Williams for... Name the film. Doctor. No. <laughs> I, th I think you're thinking of what? Patch Adams. It's not called <laughs> yeah, Dr. Patch Adams. Um, <laughs> but he was a doctor in it, in Dr. Goodwill Hunting. But, um, I will uh, just say at this point, Esther, you've got to stop looking at me for answers. I have... The answers, and I don't know what I don't know what's happening. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not the right person to be looking to for help. No. I can't even score this properly. Right. Suze, Alien Three features a predator's helmet as a background Easter egg, eventually setting up their battle in Alien vs Predator movies. Is that true or false? True. Ah, oh, why do you think it's true? Because it sounds right. It's false, isn't it? It's false. <laughs> Whatever. There's an alien skull in the spaceship at the end of Predator Two, which sets it up, but okay. it's not in Alien Three, is it? I, oh, no, obviously for not. For bonus point, <laughs> yeah. For bonus point, as 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 of June two thousand and twenty-two, what are the last three films in the Alien and Predator franchises? Oh God, uh, did, um, Prometheus. Are we including that? Are we including them? Yeah. You, you yeah. are including them. Yeah, right. Okay. All yeah, right. Shot. I don't have to. No, no, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can't remember the yeah, name yeah, of the yeah, new yeah, one. Yep, yep, yep. You're right. Yep, yep. Alien versus Predator two. No. Oh, no. No. The Prometheus 2 is called, like, Covenant or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, right. and, and you've got a really, you know, it's Alien and Predator franchises that we're talking about yeah. here. Yeah. Oh, two I aliens, see. Is there um, another Predator one? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that, that one. <laughs> oh, and what's it called? That, uh, pre Predator... X with a, yeah, with a little it, bit right. on the beginning? The Predator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. called The Predator. Oh, okay, great. The Predator. <laughs> Any fun facts about that, Huge? Sorry? Never mind. Oh, wait, and on, question, no, no, question, no, 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 yeah, no, no, too wait, late, too little, too late. Quick, no, question no. six, going over to Elf. Uh, director Christopher, you, are we all, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it's difficult to know if anyone's listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> director Christopher Nolan calls the actor Maurice Micklewhite his lucky charm and has cast him in eight of his films to date. Is that true or false? Uh, so Christopher Nolan is a big fan of the actor Maurice Micklewhite, and he's cast him in eight of his films to date. Is that true or false? Can you describe what he looks like? <laughs> he looks exactly like Michael Caine. <laughs> what do we think? True. Yeah, it's Michael Caine. Yay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's Michael Caine. Uh, the correct answer is true. Maurice Micklewhite is better known as Michael Caine, who has appeared as Alfred in Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy and also contributed to five other Nolan... What, you couldn't be bothered? He's, he's in, what, the Dark Knight trilogy and five other Nolan films. That's what he did. He's in eight of them. For a bonus point, Elf, name any three of the five Christopher Nolan films that feature Michael Caine, but not any of the Batman films. OK, so there's the dream one, Inception. Yeah. Then there's the other one he's done recently about doing things in the forward to go into the back, um, which yeah, didn't seem that. that my dad said was really upsetting. <laughs> I don't know why. One of the worst films I've ever paid money for. Yes, yeah, so yeah. there's that one. Uh, although, if you're listening, Chris, <laughs> I'd love to be in one of your movies. <laughs> <laughs> So that's Elf on three, Sue's on two, and yeah. Esther on two and a half. Yeah. The, the producer's shaking his head. Well, oh, what's, 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 what is the score? Hang on. We've got two scorekeepers now. 
All right, and, and, and we're, we're no closer to knowing what the fucking scores are. I think this is a bit excessive, if, ever, if anything. We're spending money like Ridley Scott in the 90s. Um, <laughs> Uh, round two is called Sounds Like Movies. Uh, in this round... <laughs> in this round, our contestants will hear three great songs from movies all released in the same year. Contestants, that's you. Me. All you have to... No, all of you. Yeah, all sorry. you have to do is name the song title for one point and the film it comes from, from another point. And then just to reiterate, we don't care who made the song, just what the song is, and then what film it's from, and then at the end, the third point for the year. Does everybody understand what's going on? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I meant to play it. Let's play I, the songs. I thought we were just, I thought that, okay. <laughs> Can I just say, I smashed that. Mm. You did really well. Everyone ran around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, it's important to reward good work. Well done. Um, OK, so the correct answer. Everyone, put, turn, your, turn, your, turn your boards around. Let's see what you're... I do. Esther, let's see, let's see your board first, Esther. Let's have a look. OK, can I just point out this point, that I do actually think that I've got a memory problem. <laughs> sure. sure. So uh, the first one was, um, I think, Don't You, from a film I don't know. Uh, Just for the podcast, if you're listening, that sounds drawn a picture of a Charizard. <laughs> and the second one is Power of Love. Sure. From a film I don't know. You don't know what the power of fucking love is I from. Can't. <laughs> I right, can't and then remember. the third one you didn't even. I can't remember. Okay. I think, I think I'm menopausal. Uh, Sue's, Sue's turn over your board. Let's see. Breakfast Club, Don't You Forget About Me for yeah. Simple Minds. I know you didn't need to know, but I knew. Okay. Um, Power of Love, Back to the Future. Yeah, and then what's the last one? I don't know, because I was going, my pen doesn't work. Right, yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, that's on you, really, oh, isn't back it? Back to the Future. An elf. I remember um, it now. So, what are you she's drawn pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I didn't. I'll take those away. It's just loads, <laughs> um, it's just loads, of, it's just loads of stick men. I just like the colours. Um, so, the first is from a film called The Breakfast Club, and I thought the song was called Hey, Hey, Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then... The second one, I didn't know, so I just felt, it felt like it was saying, believe in yourself. That's how I felt. And then the, the second third... one you thought was saying, believe in yourself. <laughs> no, it just believe in like... yourself. <laughs> that's a much but better I... song. It fits, like, it fits. No, but if I was lacking in confidence, that's the song I put on going like, believe in yourself. <laughs> and that's how I felt. And then the next song, I was like, oh, and then it made me think, I like dancing. So that was the other title. You know what? It's, it's just weird, right? Um, you've, you've got all the points. You've got it. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, you got it all wrong. Um, uh, the, the, the correct answers were, don't you forget about me from The Breakfast Club. Uh, the Power of Love uh, from Back to the Future. One of, I believe, uh, four songs called The Power of Love that all came out in the yeah. same time period. Uh, and we don't need another hero, Tina Turner from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The year, of course, was... 1985. 1985. I got that. 1985. Wait, did we get told that already? No. Oh, he said 87 before. He was I, negging. I, 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 well, when I said 1987 earlier, I was picking a random year. I wasn't giving you the answer. I'm worried that I'm at a... Behind, what's the phrase when you're on the back leg? Draw it. Well, Elf, let's as... keep all our worries in a little box in our stomach and let's get on with the show. <laughs> round three is called Title Fights. This round tests how well you know your movie titles. Contestants take it in turns naming movie titles with a common word in the title. For example, if we ask you to name as many films as possible with speed in the title, Esther might say, Speed? Suze might say, speed two, cruise control, and Elf might be knackered because there were only two speed films made. Anyway, can you think of another film with speed in the title, Elf? The French film Vite? <laughs> that, uh, uh, no, that doesn't... That doesn't um... what, what's the one with the snail in it? Speedy. Turbo. Turbo. <laughs> you could have had Turbo. You could have had Speed Racer. You could have had Speed Racer. 
of course. But Need yeah, for Speed with yeah. uh, him out of Breaking Bad. Um, yeah, is that no, a film? we don't talk about Netflix films. <laughs> Although, if you're listening, Netflix, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like you've got a lot of money going around. <laughs> um, okay, right, so each correct title is worth one point. You'll hear... Oh, hang on, wait, mate. <laughs> Check out the big brain on bread. But if you get one wrong, or choose a title we've already had, or you just take too long to think of one, you'll hear... Throw me a frickin' bone here. No, oh, it's still good, isn't it? <laughs> and that means you lose a life. You only have three lives, so oh, you've got no. three lives each, and then you're out, right? Points will be added to your scores from the previous rounds, and the contestant with the fewest points will sadly be leaving us as we go into the final round. This week's word is... Drum roll. American. So your word is American. You've got a name films with the word American in the title. So we're looking for the full titles of movies with the word American in the title, right? Uh, starting with you, Esther, uh, we need the name of a film with the word American in the title. American Sniper. Ooh, is that ooh, a film? Very that good. Is a film. That is a film. <laughs> All right, Suze. Check out the big brain on bread. <laughs> Are we doing it right? Are we doing it right? Doing it right? It, wait, do I have to do that for... Yeah, every so I'm keeping score and doing the sound cues <laughs> and also checking whether it's right or the same... Yeah, OK. Esther, uh, American Sniper. Right, yeah. OK. Uh, yeah. Suze. American Psycho. Yeah, good. OK, Elf. American... Oh, hang on, you're Check not doing the, the buttons. Check out the big brain on bread! <laughs> It's good, the it's thing good. Is, the thing is, this quiz is faster than Hughes' fingers. <laughs> okay, right. So, American, American Sniper, American Psycho. American Beauty. Check. The big brain on bread. <laughs> Back to you, Esther. American Pie. American Pie, absolutely. Check out the big brain on bread. That's, that's opened up the floodgates. American, many... American Movie. Yeah, sure. You could have had American Check Pie too, though. Check out the big brain you? on bread. Elf. American Pie 3, The Wedding. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely. Check out the big brain on bread. Uh, Esther, Esther. American, um, American. You're, you're halfway there. Uh, <laughs> Come on. American Dog. <laughs> Are you, did you not Throw see that? Throw me a frickin' bone here. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me a frickin' bone. You, you've lost a life, but you've still got two left. Right, Suze. American Honey. Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> Check out the big brain on bread. I'm finding that really annoying. I don't know if everyone else is. Elf, you keep going. American Gigolo. American Check Gigolo, yeah. Check out the big brain on bread. Esther. No, I'm done. You're done, you're I'm out. I'm out, You're forfeiting. Okay, it's just yeah. between you two then. Um, Suze? American Gangster. Sure, yeah. Check out the big yeah. brain on bread. Yeah, stop it. Okay, Check right. out the... Stop it. <laughs> elf, elf. I'm pretty sure there's a film called American Boy that I saw once. Sure, I That's think. That's a song. Check That's a song. No, no, but there is like a terrible teen drama film about. Throw me a frickin' bone. <laughs> here. I'll draw it. Okay, <laughs> Suze, and, and more. American Boy too. Yeah, no, God, it. fucking hell! Nobody said that. It was weird. It was weird, right? Yeah, good, oh. right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Elf. American Pie the Reunion. Yes, fucking hell! Check out the big brain yeah, on bread. Stuff, you feel like a fucking American. idiot now. American. We got to draw the American Pies. Come on. So oh, there are no more an American, American Pies. Tale. They made American Tale. Yeah, an American Tale, but I think that counts. Yeah, sure, sure. Check out the big brain on bread. <laughs> I hate this round. Right, Elf. <laughs> Babe, pig in America. No, oh, yeah. fuck you! Uh, no. <laughs> the big I haven't lost bread. any lives. American team. American, you, you can't oh. yourself. <laughs> American, two. American Tale 2, Five All Goes West. Sure, fine. <laughs> Check out the big brain on bread. Okay, I'm thinking that a lot of the problem with that was um, uh, the sound desk and also the word American. Oh, American werewolf in Paris. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would have yeah. been good. <laughs> Or American, American Wealth in London. Check surely. out the big brain on bread. The good one, the good one. The good Check one, out the, the first big... one. No one's walking around going American Wealth in Paris. <laughs> What's your fucking favourite film? American Wealth in Paris. Have you seen American Wealth in London? Oh, not really heard of that one. Fuck off. American Wealth in Paris. Fuck me. American... American... 
American flyer. American flyer. American flyer. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Check out the big brain on Brad. <laughs> so, Check so, out so. the big brain. <laughs> the American. The American, sure. <laughs> Check out the big brain on Brad. American werewolf in London. Yeah. <laughs> Check out the big brain yeah, on Brad. American werewolf in London. Uh, Esther. American mermaids. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was famously just called Mermaids in America. Um, Throw me a frickin' bone here. Are you even playing anymore, oh, guys? What's going on? What's going on? Oh, let's move on to the scores from Huge. Huge, one of them scores, mate. Esther uh, is uh, six and a half. Uh, Suze is 14 and Elf is 12. All right, OK. Unfortunately, the credits are rolling for the lowest scoring player and we have to lose them. Commi oh no. Commiserations to third place, Esther. <laughs> Esther. <laughs> Esther Benito. Um, what are you asking? I was like, because you were pointing like I have to leave. I was like, do I need to leave? No, 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 we've actually <laughs> okay. worked it out. You're just going to sit there in silence for the next half hour. <laughs> What well, happens is if you if you lose if you lose in this round next week you have to come back and do the scores. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there for four, I've been here for four years. Like, uh, that's that's not a thing, Esther. But you do have to remain quiet. Does she really have to remain quiet? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, round four is called Gone in sixty seconds. It won't be that long, Esther. Our remaining contestants, Susan Elf, are about to battle it out in a final quickfire quiz covering all eras, all genres, and all levels of difficulty. Oh, make them easy, though, right? Anything could happen in the next 60 seconds, but there will probably be quite a lot of film quiz questions. <laughs> Knowing us. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> all right, first minute. All right, all right. Okay, Suze, uh, we're going to yeah. go. We're going to go with you first because okay. you've got the highest score so far. Are you ready? Yes. Right. Uh, it's a minute, and your time starts now. Which comedy legend wrote, directed, and starred in the 1940 film *The Great Dictator*? Charlie Chaplin. In which month of the year are the Home Alone films typically set? December. What title connects the 2013 remake starring Chloe Grace Moretz with the 1976 original starring Sissy Spacek? Carrie. Yeah. Yeah. Usually produced in Europe, which type of Western takes its name from an Spaghetti. Italian... Spaghetti. Yeah. The first shot of every Indiana Jones movie matches to the mountain from which movie studio's logo? Paramount. In what year did Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Rain Man and Coming to America top the global box office chart? 88. The films Crazy Stupid Love, Gangster Squad and La La Land all pair Emma Stone with which... Ryan Gosling. Which musical's title literally translates in English as Red Windmill? Moon on Rouge. Who received the three Oscar nominations in a row for acting in The Insider, Gladiator and A Beautiful Mind? Russell Crowe. In which blockbuster film franchise does Colin Firth play a character called Harry Bright? Uh, Kingsman. No. Time, oh. time, it's time. No, it was, of course... <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The last one. That was, like, that was like nine points, right? That was, nine. that was like, yeah, that was like nine points. That was nine points. You might as well have said, fuck you, elf. Was like, no, that's, that's mad. <laughs> yeah, that was nine points. That's really good. The only one that you got wrong there was uh, Colin Firth, obviously, plays a character called Harry Bright in my favorite Italian movie, Mamma Mia. Oh, Mamma Mia! I hate those films. Oh, they're the best films. Um, <laughs> they're my favorite. Uh, quick, quick true story. Uh, the first time I watched Mamma Mia, it was on TV. And there's the bit where uh, Julie Waters is sticking her head underneath the toilet stall, singing to uh, 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 Meryl Streep. Yeah. And Meryl Streep's in the, in the bathroom stall. And I walked in, and it was on TV at Christmas. I walked in, <laughs> and that bit happened. And Julie Waters popped her head up. And I ran to the toilet and projectile vomited. <laughs> That, that's that. my review. <laughs> um, okay, great. So, Elf, are you ready with your first minute, right? Yeah. Right, it's everything to play for. Okay. <laughs> are you ready with the time? Yeah? Well, we're not, obviously not. No, right. <laughs> All right, time starts now. Complete the trilogy, The Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, and which 2016 sequel? Oh, work it, it out. I don't know. You can pass. <laughs> you can pass. Inferno, right. Uh, which 1989 short film was the debut of Ardman's Wallace and Gromit? I don't know. A Grand AR. What is the full title of the first Pirates of the Caribbean film? Pirates of the Caribbean? I don't know. Curse of the Black Pearl. Uh, which singer acts in the 1950s films King Creole, Love Me Tender and Jailhouse Rock? I, I don't know. Are you I'm going to say it really fucking slowly, right? 
which singer acts in the 1950s films King Creole, Love Me Tender, and Jailhouse Rock? Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, yes, yes. Oh. Stop clapping. Uh, Tommy Gunn, Mason Dixon, and Clubber Lang are all antagonists in which movie series? I don't know. Come on. Rocky. 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 Rocky? Yeah, yeah, Rocky. Yeah, it's Rocky. It's that's Rocky. Rocky. You've done it. Uh, that's, that's, it's time's finished. That's great. You've got two points. <laughs> and uh, that came at just the right moment because we ran out of questions. Um, so, <laughs> so, so we would have had to you know, watch me make some up, I suppose. Um, um, yeah, so I think the scores is Alpha's on 13 and Sue's is on 23. One or two. Okay, well, Suze, you're the best around. Nothing's going to ever keep you down, and that's the end of this week's film quiz. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Film Quiz Podcast. Tune in for more movie-related questions next time. I've been Nick Helm. Thanks to my school master and trivia nut, Hughes Davies. And that's here for Esther Minito, <laughs> Suze Kepner, and Alf Lyons. You've been listening to the Film Quiz Podcast hosted by me, Nick Helm. My score master was Hugh Davies. Today's contestants were Esther Manito, Suze Kempner and Elf Lyons. The show was recorded, edited and mastered by Louis Fitton. Assistant producer was Teddy Coward. Guest booker was Emma Turner. Thanks to Steve, Stuart and Jake, our camera people. Our exec producer is Simon Brew. And our producer is Howard Cohen. The Film Quiz Podcast is a Why Now and Film Stories production, hosted by me, Nick Helm.